everyone, welcome to my second ever video. In case you don't know, my name is Miranda. And I said in my first video that I was gonna do a lot of military-related videos at first because that was so helpful to me when I was thinking about enlisting. So I thought I would pay the paper back and put out some videos that are a little bit more up to date. So today we're gonna talk about what boot camp is like for a female in the Air Force. So stick around. I have a list of topics that I definitely want to hit. Um, so stick around if you want to hear what basic training is like for the Air Force. Okay, so I'm going to start this off with the first day. Like right when you get off the bus, you pull up to Lackland in case you don't know, basic training for the Air Force is at Lackland. It's nine and a half weeks. So the bus picks you up from the airport and takes you to Lackland Air Force Base. And everything's fine and dandy, you're hanging out, the bus driver lets you stay on your phone, and then the bus stops, and this guy with this rimmed hat gets on and starts yelling at you to hurry up and get off the bus and get on the docks. So, you know, you put your phone away, you get off the bus as quick as you can, and you run to the docks. And it's just a lot of yelling. Uh, they're yelling at you for your hat, or for your shoes, or your hair, or the way you breathe, or your name, you know, all that good stuff. And uh, they take you to this room and you just fill out some paperwork. It's like a giant auditorium. And then they take you to your squadron. I personally was in the 320th, can't stop the rock, um, in flight 444. Hey, flight sisters, if you're watching this, what's up? Um, I was in flight 444 and I was in an older squadron. Like the building was really old. There's a newer, there's newer squadrons out right now, and we call them Disneyland because they are very fancy. They have like automatic, um, what are those things called? Water fountains. Their bunk beds are really nice, and their de fact is, ha ha. We had to go there once, and it was so good. Anyways, um, so they take you upstairs to your dorm, I guess you could call it, and there's going to be an A bay and a B bay, and the A bay is all of the bunk beds and the B-Bay is the same exact thing. And then the MTI's office is in the middle. The MTI doesn't stay there at night. Um, I guess they used to, but they don't do that anymore. So there's a lot of restrictions on how long they can work. So you get there and they yell at you to get down to your skivvies. You have to take a shower. So you get butt ass naked um, in front of 20 strangers. My flight had 44 people, but I think it was 44. It started off as 44. But um, slowly, they were coming in throughout the night. So you get naked and you grab whatever soap that you brought with. And you go to the shower and you just kind of <laughs> pretend like you're showering. And you lather up and you hurry up and get out of there. <laughs> My cat. Uh, you hurry up and get out of there. So then you go and you dry off on this towel that's like yay big. And um, they tell you to get into your pajamas. And for some reason, I didn't bring pajamas. So I just was wearing underwear and a bra. And I got yelled at a lot for that. But hey, whatever. You try to go to sleep. Uh, mind you, it's probably already 11 or 12 o'clock at night. And there's girls coming in all throughout the night. So you only get like an hour or two of sleep. Then at 4.45 a.m., you hear the burr, 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 that whole thing. And you just kind of hop out of bed. And you're not tired because it's just so much adrenaline. You're just, whoa, this is a whole new experience. So for that whole day, you're called the rainbow flight because you're just oh so colorful in all your civilian clothes. But later that day or the next day, depending on how your MTI sets it up, you're going to march over to the clothing issue. And for the 320th, it was far, really far. We're like the furthest squadron from everyone. So you march over there after they teach you how to march. Don't worry. They teach you everything. They don't expect you to know anything. Like you're a brand new baby and they just need to mold you. So don't freak out if you don't know how to do anything because nobody did. So you march over to the clothing issue and they give you all your clothes and they give you four sets of uniforms. You put it in your duffel bag and you march back. And that was probably the worst. It sounds so pathetic, but there was hills and it was far and you're just like, oh, and it was hot. I went during the summertime and it was hot. So anyways, you... Get all your clothing and then you come back and you're going to write your name on everything, pull the tags, cut the strings, everything that is tedious and annoying. So you do all that, you set up your locker and there you go. That's about the first day or two. Um, I'm going to break this up into the main things that happen. So a third of it, believe it or not, is classes. You wouldn't expect this. I didn't expect this at all, but you spend a lot of time in classrooms just learning about the military, 
not learning about your job at all. You're just learning about the military because it's everyone. Everyone has a different job. You're all in the class together. So you're learning about your benefits, your GI Bill, which is the thing that pays for your college, um, medical, what's that thing called? SABC, everything. You're just learning a lot. So that's one third of it. It's just sitting in a classroom, which it sucks because you're so tired. So you would always sit next to somebody that is your friend and you would say, okay, you keep me awake, I'll keep you awake. So one third of it is classes. Another one third of it is PT. Now, I just want to say this. If PT is the reason you're too nervous to join the Air Force or you're just like, ah, I'm not in shape enough. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's, I'm not saying it's a joke or anything, but it is so not as hard as you think it's going to be. The minimum, even now, the minimum push-ups that I had to do to pass an Air Force PT test is 18. I have to do 39 sit-ups, and I have like 16 minutes to run a mile and a half. There, If you get there and you are super out of shape, they will work with you. Even if you fail your first few PT tests, you might have to stay at boot camp a little bit longer, but it's not the end of the world. So if you ever say, I can't join the Air Force because I'm not in shape, it's the Air Force. <laughs> You'll be fine. It's really not that hard. You basically go every morning and you do push-ups and sit-ups and burpees and jumping jacks. And then you run for about half an hour. So that's another one-third of it. And the other one-third of it is just the tedious stuff. You're doing a lot of marching. You're doing a lot of cutting strings. A lot of folding socks. A lot of tedious, tedious work. But it's not that bad. Um, so yeah, so one third classes, one third is PT and one third is going to be the tedious stuff like strings and marching and all that good stuff. So I think it's week five or six, you're going to go to what's called beast week or warrior week. And a lot of people are really scared of this week, but no, 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 it is the best week. It is so much fun. It's basically like a mock deployment and you go on this long bus ride to, I don't even know where it was, to be honest. Um, and you get set up in this tent in the middle of the dirt, like you're deployed, and you do a lot of drills. Like, I think it's called mock, mock something. <laughs> I'm going to feel like an idiot if this is wrong, but they'll say, like, mock level one, and you'll put on all your, your outer gear, like there was a chemical war going on, mock level two, and you'll put on your gloves and your boots, mock level three, mock level four, a mask, so on and so forth. Um, so you do a lot of drills like that. You go to the gas chamber where you put on all your mock gear. You go into the gas chamber. They let out the tear gas. You take it off. You say your reporting statement. I'm sorry, I didn't even touch on that. Uh, before you say anything at basic training to an MTI, you have to say, Sir Trainee McMahon reports his order. If that was my maiden name, I would say tr Sir Trainee Golnick reports his order at attention before you say anything. It's annoying, but whatever. So you say your reporting statement and a few other things, and then you leave. It's really not that bad. Um, your eyes water a lot. I went in one of the I was one of the first people to go in. Me and Grow Cot, if you're watching this, hi. Um, we were one of the first people to go in, and we were super lucky because the gas had just started to come out, and we took off our masks and we left, and our eyes were burning. And our nose was a little drippy, but not that big of a deal. And then we sat down and waited for everyone to finish. And people were coming out just like, ugh. It's not just like pouring out of their nose and their eyes were burning. But five minutes later, they're fine. So that's really fun. Um, then you do the obstacle course during Beast Week, which is also super fun. It's not as hard as you think, as always. Um, everything with boot camp, I swear. It's not as hard. It's not as crazy as you could ever imagine. It's, you're just, you're in it and you're doing it and that's that. So obstacle week or obstacle course is really fun. So just another few things I want to touch on is phone calls. Um, a lot of people freak out because they say you don't get any phone calls. A lot of people make fun of the Air Force because they say you get to keep your phone and you get a call every day. So I just want to like close the case, myth busted. It depends on your MTI. No, you don't get to keep your cell phone. <laughs> they take it away, but you get it back with the phone calls. I personally, my flight, got one phone call to call home and say, hey, I'm here, I'm safe, here's my address, okay, bye. Another phone call halfway to tell us, tell them the date of our graduation, and a third phone call the week before to say, hey, are you coming to our graduation? That was it. So yeah, a lot of flights get it every week. 
some flights get one phone call. It's all up to your NTI. So there's that. Uh, there's no distress card. I've heard that a lot, that you can pull a card out of your pocket and say, hey, I'm really stressed out. Can you stop? That's not true. Um, you just got to deal with it. And protein bars. This is a new thing with boot camp um, for the Air Force is every night when you are leaving the defect or the chow hall, I guess it was called there, for dinner, you grab a protein bar and you get to have it like two hours before bed. And that's awesome. <laughs> we would normally save them or something and uh, or swap them or something like that. It was just like a fun thing. And yeah, <laughs> there's probably someone in the Marines watching this laughing their ass off right now saying that we're wimps, but that's okay. You know what? We got protein bars. That's fun. Another, well, okay, this is kind of a serious topic, but if you are, how do I say this? I know there was a lot of issues going on with rapes and sexual assaults and everything going on at basic training. That is kaput to my knowledge. Uh, when I went, it was right after everything happened. And a lot of people said to me, like, aren't you scared you're going to get raped? Aren't you scared it's going to happen? And I don't know why it just wasn't a thought in my mind, which is fine because it wasn't an issue for me um, as far as basic training because there's a partnership rule. What is it called? A wingman. You have to have a wingman. I'm sorry. Everywhere that you go, bathroom, bathroom <laughs> is um, with a wingman. So you always have someone with you. And yeah, so it was never really an issue. So if that's something that you're nervous about, don't be. They've kind of taken care of that, the Air Force, in that aspect. I can't speak for everyone or everything. And so lastly is graduation. Graduation is the most exciting, proud moment of your whole life, probably. And well, up to that point, it's really cool. The last week you're wearing nothing but blues, which sucks, but whatever. Um, you... The morning of graduation, you march over to this big field and you guys all get information and you're going to run and singing Jody's. Jody's are the best part, by the way, of marching. It's really fun and I wish you did it in like active duty Air Force. Um, so you're going to sing Jody's and run by your whole family and they're all probably all crying and it's a beautiful moment. <laughs> and... Um, then you run back to your squadron and you eat a protein bar and you chug some Gatorade and you change into your blues. No, you change into your ABUs and you have the graduation moment where you get your coin and your family's still crying then and you might be crying. <laughs> and then the next day, you're in your blues on the field on the graduation. Graduation is like a two-day long process. But then the next few days, you get to go out with your family to San Antonio and that's really fun. Um, so it's all a really exciting, scary new thing it's really fun honestly looking back on it in the moment it was very terrifying and very nerve-wracking but looking back on it it was the best weeks of my life because it made me an airman <laughs> as cliche as it sounds you know it's like a nine and a half long week interview and not a lot of people can say that they've been through that so yeah and when you leave you have a serious sisterhood like these people that you went to basic training with it is a serious sisterhood and if you're in my flight 444 and you're watching this you know exactly what I'm talking about or if you weren't and you went to base training and you are watching this you know what I'm talking about those are your girls you guys went through hell together and you survived and you made it and it's a lifelong connection and it's the best thing in the whole world I still talk to my girls that I went to boot camp with most of them one of them came here hey Jasmine um so it's really fun and I wouldn't take any of it back so yeah, if you're thinking about joining Air Force, just go for it. If it's something you really want, don't let something like boot camp ever stop you. So yeah, um, next week I would like to talk about the transition of boot camp to my job. Um, I didn't really talk about it a lot in this video, but I am open general, or was open general, which means I just really wanted to get in. Um, it was either that or security forces, and my hearing wasn't good enough to go in security forces. So I had to go open general and I found out my job, I think it was the second to last week. They took us to this big meeting and you had to fill a lot of paperwork. It's a lot of paperwork in basic training. And um, they tell you what you've been selected for. You get to fill out this form with like your top five, which is, I don't think it means anything, as well as your dream sheet, which <laughs> does not mean anything. So don't let dream sheets freak you out or get excited about it. 
I live in Illinois. Illinois was not on my list. Um, they just send you where the Air Force needs you. So like I said, I chose my top five jobs in my material management, and I think that was number five. So yeah, um, you can't really rebut against it. It's just is what it is. And yeah, but I'll talk more about that in my second video because I do have a lot to say about it if you guys want to hear. So hopefully this was helpful to you and answered any questions you had about basic training. It wasn't super in-depth, but those were the main things that I could really think of. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions, just comment them below and I will address them in my next video. All right, thanks guys for watching. Bye.